Hello and good evening to you. Welcome to News 360 and it's live money news up here at Desaue in Kanda. My name is Alfred Akansi. And I am Solis Rose Porte. We'll be having lots of news from health, politics and some education as well in the next 16 minutes. But coming up. News 360 headlines is brought to you by... Coming up in the next 60 minutes, a near brawl outside the Chamber of Parliament as minority accused trade ministry of charging expatriates between $25,000 and $100,000 to offer them seats close to the president. Also, Chief Justice Sophia Kofu appoints Supreme Court judge to preside over a committee to investigate the chairperson of the Electoral Commission and two deputies. Human rights activist questions how pictures of the three minors alleged to have carried out the gang rape have gone viral after the arrest by the police. And in business evening, the Minister of Finance wants collaboration with the Insurance Commission for a new insurance act in 2018. And on the international front, Zambia's police force scraps plans to employ eight Chinese nationals following a public outcry. Details coming up shortly. Please stay with us. It's News 360 and let's start off with our first story. And there was a near brawl outside the Chamber of Parliament between Deputy Trade Minister Carlos Zahinkra and MP for North Tong Samo Okujetu Ablakwa over accusations that the Trade Ministry charged expatriates to sit with the President at an award ceremony. The minority had accused the Ministry of charging between $25,000 and $100,000 to offer them seats close to the President. President. Let me let, let, let him know that he's a thief. You have stolen through your life and you have you are you are you you, you have even lied through your education. Deputy Minority Chief Whip Muntaka Mubarak during the approval of the Trades and Industry Ministry's budget said the fees charged at the Ghana Expatriate Business Awards were not the kind approved by Parliament. He said monies collected were not accounted for in the ministry's internally generated funds. Speaking to the media in Parliament, North Tong MP Samuel Okujatua Blakwa insisted the ministry was guilty of the accusations being leveled against it. He described it as unacceptable and a disgrace to the presidency. We are scandalized that the office of president is being desecrated, that you are using the office of president to profiteer, to make money, and you are extorting from the business community, the expatriate business community. An unhappy deputy trace and industry minister, Carlos Ahinkra, interrupted the interview the North Tongue MP was granting the press. You, you have even lied through your education. Minister, Minister, can please, you then no, to me. Where is the document? Please, yeah, give me the document. Responding to the accusations, the deputy minister explained the monies the expatriates were being asked to pay was sponsorship for the program and that came with various packages for the companies. He said the ministry was not responsible for the organization of the program. Out of the 450 expatriate businesses, the event organizers selected about 30 or 40 of them for sponsorship, or they contacted them for sponsorship. And by doing so, they invited them to a dinner to, as it were, present their sponsorship package to them for them to decide on whatever sponsorship pack, uh, uh, package they want to select. Now, it was at the um, dinner that we realized or we saw for the first time what packages they were presenting to the sponsors. Sponsorship is nothing like taking, putting a gun to somebody's head and saying, whether you like it or not, come and sponsor. It is not gate fee. Nobody said that we are putting a table at the gate. If you don't pay 100000 you are not entering. 
still in parliament, the new patriotic party member of parliament for Akwetia in the eastern region, Mercy Edujenfi, aka Mama Say, for the first time made a statement on the floor of the house. On Tuesday, August 23rd, 2011, we found the then vice president of Ghana, adult uh, only own Ghanaian company, the great consolidated Diamond Ghana Limited. The MP, who is a beautician, became popular in the run-up to the 2016 general elections after the then incumbent MP for the area, Baba Jamal, reportedly described her as an unfit hairdresser to occupy the Akwetia parliamentary seat. Later in parliament, Defence Minister Dominic Nitiwu said work on the proposed military school to be built on the disputed Alavanyo and Inkunya traditional land in the Vota region is 70% complete. We're going to be returning to that brawl between uh, Samuel Okojato Blacko and the Deputy Trade and Industry Minister as we go on to the bulletin very shortly. So stay with us. But the Chief Justice Sophia Kofu has appointed a Supreme Court judge to preside over the committee to investigate the chairperson of the Electoral Commission and her two deputies, the three Shaloto Say, Sule Amadu and Georgino Poko Mankwa, have been accused of corruption and breaches of the law. If found culpable, it will lead to their removal from office. According to a statement signed by the Judicial Secretary and copied to TV3, the five-member committee was established after the Chief Justice determined that there was a prima facie case against the three officials of the EC. The committee, which is in accordance with Article 146 of the 1992 Constitution, consists of three justices of the Superior Court appointed by the Judicial Council and two other persons appointed by the Chief Justice on the advice of the Council of State. The committee, according to the press release, will sit in camera. It is the expectation of the CJ and the Judicial Council that the public will treat the committee with respect and dignity as it carries out its duties. It also cautioned the public to refrain from making comment that will undermine the committee's work since it may amount to contempt. Now away from that, the eight accused persons discharged by a district court in the Major Maxwell Mahama murder case want compensation from the state over wrongful accusations leveled against them. Now lawyer for the discharged accused argued rather his clients have gone through intolerable trauma and anguish since the arrest in May 2017. The eight persons were among 14 others facing trial on charges of murder. They were released upon the request of the Attorney General, which said there is no sufficient evidence against them to warrant their committal to stand trial in the case. They are Solomon Kojo Fojo, Yao Ano, Ebenezer Pia, Kwame J, Solomon Saki, Philip Bedu, Anthony Amwa, and a female, Vivian Asahene. Lawyer for the accused persons, Bernard Shaw, served notice in court that he would file an application for compensation. He also accused the prosecution of doing a shoddy job, arguing that if prosecution had its facts right, it would have arrested the right persons. I have been acting for these accused people right from the inception of the case, purely on a pro bono basis, for, for free. And I've seen what they've gone through, um, even the anxiety of having a trial and knowing that because we all know that the, cap uh, the punishment for this type of offenses is capital punishment. So all we were doing was basically saying to the court that um, they have to be compensated for the ordeal that they've been through. All we were saying is that if like the proper investigation, the assessment of the evidence has been done at the onset of the case before you go in and arrest. You can place people on police bail, you can, there are so whole, whole lot of things because liberty is integral. Feeling vindicated, the eight, after entering the police van, offered prayers to God ostensibly for their discharge. A total of 14 people will now stand trial for the lynching and killing of the soldier Major Maxwell Mahama at Denchobwasi in the central region. The police earlier arrested over 50 suspects 
who had fled the town to other regions in the country. 36 of the suspects have been discharged since the trial commenced at the district court. The case has been adjourned to January 11, 2018 for the committal process to commence. All right, so let's go on to our earlier story that uh, we revealed had to do with the brawl between Samuel Okujatua Blackwa and the Deputy Trade and Industry Minister, Car Carlos Ahinkra there. Now, I've been joined on Skype by Adam Senano. He's the co-chair of the Citizens' Movement Against Corruption. Now, Mr. Senano, good evening to you. Thank you very much for your time this evening. Now, this particular news has been in the media for the past two, three days. Now, does this, I mean, these developments tickle your senses of suspicion about some malfeasance in all of this? Well, good evening to you. Um, it's, it's a bit difficult to tell at the moment, even though there appears to be some form of conflict of interest. Um, it's not too surprising. A lot of the PPPs that um, we've had governments go into with private sector tend to result in situations of conflict of interest, which can also lead to corruption when not well handled. And this appears to be one of those instances where the idea of raising money for an event, which is a, a government event, um, with money go in, going into a private sector entity's uh, coffers, um, it's, it's a very strange one and, and, and very likely to have some forms of conflict of interest and possibly some some potential corruption going on, uh, and we need to investigate it. Now, uh, would it be worth finding out uh, whether these expatriates who allegedly pay this tw between $25,000 and $100 actually got what they paid for? Because the trade ministry is saying that, look, uh, they had little or less influence in the whole organization process, and this money was not a prerequisite to participate we should be finding out from these experts if they had what they paid for, Ms. Serrano. No, this is a very, I mean, it's a very, very serious issue to have happened. Uh, one does not expect government entities or officials to be involved in this type of actions. Um, it has to be investigated because this is not a kind of practice that would expect to continue with the public sector. It doesn't matter um, who was involved. Uh, some investigation asked to how did this come about? Who benefited? And why should the president of our republic be um, dollars to sit close to him, etc.? And that goes into a private entity's coffers. This, this is a very serious issue, and it ought to be fully investigated. Now, which persons are you expecting to speak about this? Because until the deputy trade and industry minister spoke, we had indication that parliament wanted the trade minister to appear before the house to answer some questions relating to this there had been some silence up until now who should have been speaking and explaining to us the details about this particular issue i think first and foremost the sector ministry itself ought to provide clarity as to exactly what transpired um uh, the point at which we are now it will serve no purpose if they kept quiet we need full disclosure on what the whole concept was about, who benefited from it, where those monies are lodged, uh, and how come it appears that our presidency, in one sense, was being sold to the highest bidder in terms of the sitting position. Um, it's not the kind of thing one would expect, let alone um, imagine that uh, well-intentioned officers would be involved in. So it is a full-blown investigation. I hear that Parliament is considering not just, I, I think it's the minority, I'm raising, asking questions on it, but also asking for an investigation. I think that would be a good start. But the sector ministry itself must come clean as to what exactly transpired. Uh, those who are asking that IOKO uh, and the Bureau of National Investigation, Shraj, should get into this matter, would you subscribe to saying? Absolutely. Um, I, I, I think we need some more details as to exactly what transpired. I am not quite sure. I mean, charge has to be, if it has to be kicking, somebody has to make a complaint. But in the case of Yoko and BNI, I guess they can start their investigations if they're so minded to, even now, 
so that the, the challenge is whether this will be made public as quickly as possible because it's one of those situations that I think would just be a very big embarrassment not just to the government but to all of us as citizens of this nation. Zano, thank you very much for your time this evening. I'm grateful. And I'm Zano is a co-chair of the Citizens Movement Against Corruption. News 360 Skype interview is brought to you by MTN. Everywhere you go. Now let's head back to the courts where counsel for the Lebanese national accused of raping his 19-year-old Ghanaian house help has mounted a strong defense for their client, claiming he was not present in the house on the day of the said incident. Lead counsel Ralph Poku Eduse argued their client has an alibi which can be verified his whereabouts. Ralph Poku Eduse was making an application for bail for his client Rabi Haddad. He told the court the accused person was unwell and receiving medical attention at the Ridge Hospital. The lawyer insisted they have in their possession an alibi to challenge the claims being made by the prosecution. However, the High Court presided over by Justice Justin Kofi Dogu declined to grant bail. He explained he had just seen the affidavit in opposition for the bail application hence need more time to study the document. He ever urged investigators to speed up the investigation process in order not to impede the process. Per the fact by the prosecution, the accused, Rabi Haddad, on 30th November and 2nd December at his Airport Hills residence, allegedly had carnal knowledge of his house help without her consent. A former Attorney General, Mareta Brewer Piopon, is been holding a watching brief for the victim. The case has been adjourned to January 8, 2018 for ruling on the bail application. A house which was allegedly used as a brothel for commercial sex workers has been demolished in Wai in the Upper East region. This follows a mob action against suspected sex workers in the community. Meanwhile, the assemblyman for the area is being held in police custody in connection with the incident. The assemblyman for Paguru Electra area was arrested on Monday evening. He was identified by the police as a ringleader in the case, although he reported it to the police on December 10 and is assisting the police in investigations. Four of the alleged sex workers who were responding to treatment at the Upper West Regional Hospital have been discharged while one is still on admission. Upper West Regional Police Commander DCOP Edmond Odro Kwating updated the media on the development. He said the police does not know about the demolition of the brothel. Right, let's do some other stories and human rights activists are questioning how pictures of the three minors alleged to have carried out a gang rape have gone viral after the arrest by the police. They cautioned prosecution in the case to show extreme professionalism in order to keep the dignity of the victim and the accused. Unworthy of broadcast, the scenes captured these teenagers making frantic efforts to have carnal knowledge of another female the video has been shared widely and now trending gender activists there could be only one reason this act could have been carried out what comes to mind readily is uh, two of three things if not for drug abuse or for maybe alcohol addiction or maybe peer influence then is addiction to pornography because for most of the hardcore porns that young people watch that is how it's done so most often they are compelled to practice what they've seen these teenagers have been put before court after police in kumasi arrested them on saturday police at the headquarters had subsequently released a statement urging the public to assist in arresting the perpetrators while they were in custody in Kumasi. The, the source of the video can equally be traced if we put our systems in place. So those are basic things that nobody needs to tell us about. But as a country, once we are going digital, it's important that we put some 
uh, stringent measures in place in order to deal with people who may end up jeopardizing the lives of other vulnerable people in the name of excitement or anger or hate or whatever. While they have been put before court, human rights activists are sounding the caution. The Juvenile Justice Act requires that the best interest of these children uh, will be considered in dealing with them. So for example, taking pictures of these boys who have been arrested and putting them again in the media is unacceptable. The reason being that they are still minors. Uh, and so uh, they are minors who are in conflict with the law. So we still need to protect them because they still have a future uh, to protect. Let's just step further with this particular story. Three suspects in an alleged gang rape case in Kumasi in the Shanti region are expected to appear before a juvenile court on Wednesday. The case, which will be heard by a jury of four, caught the public's attention when a video on the incident went viral on social media. The three suspects are among seven boys in the viral video. The three alleged rapists were nabbed when the police went on a manhunt over the weekend with the remaining four still at large. At their Sokwa district court, there was relative calm as the accused persons waited anxiously for their fate to be revealed. But there was no proceeding. We were informed by the prosecution. A jury, as well as the parents of the suspects, were required to be present for the case to proceed. The trial is expected to resume Wednesday, December 20. Some residents expressed shock at the incident and demanded the culprits be punished irrespective of their ages. President Akufu Addo has implored the media to project the democratic credentials of Ghana to boost investor confidence. According to the president, this would also increase the country's foreign direct investment and remittances. The president, Nane Akufu Addo, was speaking during an interaction with the presidential press call. He was supported by the vice president, Dr. Mohamed Bahumia, and the chief of staff, Madame Fremont Sao Pare. He lauded effective coverage of his government's programs and activities by the press corps. Nane Kufade again emphasized that the last 11 months of his administration has been good due to the work of the presidential press corps. He implored them to project the democratic credentials of the country to boost investor confidence. We want to carry the Ghanaian people to assemble all their dynamism, their initiative, their sense of enterprise and innovation for us to build this new Ghana which is in our our dreams. He was happy comments by foreign dignitaries suggest the country is on a sound economic footing. The foreign guests who have been streaming here, that's a question they keep asking. How is it that you are different from the others in Africa? Why? Why is Ghana stable and all the others? There seems to be problems. Is there something? Is, this, is it in the fufu or whatever it is? <laughs> <laughs> but they keep asking these questions and it's because we have been able to agree that it is better for us to, to live in an open democratic atmosphere, have a uh, transparent system of changing government by the ballot box and accepting the results of the ballot box, even accepting the decisions of Supreme Courts when they go against you. Do you know the presidential press call is Charles Techi I know Ghanaians and our good selves have a lot of expectations given the fact that during your campaign there are numerous promises that you made uh, including the bold ones talk of the one district one factory one village one dam and on top of it to the promise to build a ghana beyond aid i'm sure a lot of ghanaians will be expecting to see more of the deliverables next year Director of Communications at the Presidency, Eugene Ahi, lauded the role of the Presidential Press Corps for supporting the President to achieve his mandate. Well, still on the President, President Ndokofuado says the creation of the new regions is not motivated by political advantage, but rather to ensure an effective administration of the country. Addressing chiefs and people from Konkumba communities across the country at the Flagstaff House here in Accra, the president revealed the One Village, One Dam initiative will begin next year. 
The visit by the chiefs and people from the Konkoma communities was among other requests to present a petition for the creation of the northeastern region. Speaking on behalf of the chiefs, the secretary of the Saboba traditional area, Philip Dibabe, requested for the creation of the new region to enhance development of the area. The benefits, among others, will include economic development, good and effective governance, discovery of more natural resources, educational development, effective healthcare delivery, enhanced effective security, improvement of road infrastructure, and above all, effective management of their ethnic diversity as can be seen in the northern region now. Receiving the petition, President Ikofado reiterated the importance of the creation of new regions, adding it is not for political expediency. I'm doing it because I think it would improve the governance of our country. It will bring greater coherence to the various areas that are the subject of the regions, make governance easier, more direct, and therefore enhance the quality of governance across the country. After all, we began initially at independence with, I believe, five regions. By the time the Fourth Republic came, it had doubled to 10. All of these processes are there to try and improve the quality of governance. And that is the motivation that, with which I have addressed this matter. It is not MPP advantage. Following agitations from the creation of some district, in the northern region, the president charged the people to respect constitutional processes. These matters should not be the subject of violence and people making threats and everything. That is not the way we want to run Ghana. We have grievances, yes, there's always grievances, but there are mechanisms for dealing with these grievances. That should not be saber rattling and threatening and if this doesn't happen, this will happen. No, we don't want to do that in this country. We've got to find a way of living within the parameters of our constitution, within the parameters of the law. On agriculture, the president revealed the One Village, One Dam initiative will start next year to enhance agriculture in the region. Welcome back to News 316. Time now for some business news. And let's start off from the insurance sector where the Ministry of Finance has requested the National Insurance Commission to collaborate to pass a new insurance act in 2018. The new act is expected to adequately address issues in the industry such as minimum capital, corporate governance, consumer protection and transparency. Ghana's insurance industry is said to be robust and competitive. As at the end of 2016, the industry had an asset base of 3.7 billion cities, a rise from the previous year's asset base of 3 billion cities. However, penetration rate is still below 2%, a situation which needs to be substantially improved to enable the industry play active role in the development of the country's financial sector. At an end-of-year reception for stakeholders in the industry, the Ministry of Finance proposed a number of reforms. These include passage of a new insurance act, which will deal with issues such as corporate governance, consumer protection, risk-based capital needs, and transparency. The act, when passed, should provide the needed legal environment for the implementation of the best regulatory practices to ensure a safe and sound insurance market that is able to support the government's economic transformation agenda and also help lay the foundational blocks of the financial financing needs of the private sector an engine for economic growth. The board chairman of the National Insurance Commission outlined the commission strategy for the industry in the coming year. We are going to engage the industry in a much more positive way, greater than it's been done before. We will create a platform for informed regulation. Our regulation is deeply rooted in this philosophy. It is not about hard or soft. It is about effective, open, transparent regulation. The Commissioner of the NIC, Justice Yaofori, pledged to create an enabling environment for the promotion of insurance in the country. We will ensure that there is sanity in the market and a level playing field in which well-grounded and viable companies compete fairly. 
our society must have confidence in insurance, and we all have a part to play. Now, Deputy Minister for Energy in charge of petroleum, Dr. Mohammed Amin Adam, has hinted government is set to launch a contract register for the oil and gas sector in the second week of January 2018 at the launch of the Independent Oil and Gas Information Resources Center and website. He indicated the portal will provide information on oil and gas contracts. The Independent Oil and Gas Information Resource Center is an institution set up by the World Bank funded oil and gas capacity building project and the government of Ghana. The center provides comprehensive information on the sector especially within Ghana to ensure transparency in the oil and gas sector. Deputy Minister for Energy in charge of Petroleum, Dr. Amin Adam hinted of a contract register to give true meaning to the activities of the center. We'll be launching the public register hopefully in the second week of January. The register will contain full text petroleum agreements, permits, authorizations, names of companies that bid for oil blocks, the winners of these blocks, and of course, the justification for winning those blocks. He dismissed arguments that these contracts are technical and that most citizens may not understand them. He encouraged the Independent Oil and Gas Information Resource Center to have a simplified version of oil and gas contract on their website. This is the only way we can tell the critics that information about the industry is still critical for our economic development, for social harmony, and for accountability of our public officials. Vice President of the Public Interest and Accountability Committee Kwame Jantua stated the need for the centre to gather the right information. May I beg the oil companies we have in Ghana, please open your doors for the centre to get information. Because the more we have the strength to know what is happening in the oil industry, the more we can hold government accountable. He indicated the website will enhance the work of PIAC. When we come out with our reports, we will put it on the portal. All those who normally would not have the chance to read PIAC's report, when they go on there, they will see it there. The Minister of Planning is also trying as much as possible to get the, the local planning officers in the districts to monitor projects that oil revenues have been uh, invested in. That too information, I'm sure, would be on here. So I'm sure gradually they will try to bring all the different websites that has to do with the oil industry onto the portal. And I think it's a good thing. Now away from that, Siemens Ghana is aiding engineering education in Ghana with the installation of an industrial automation and control equipment at KNUSD College of Engineering. The Sematic Automation Solution Kit would enable engineering students to stimulate automation processes for a whole range of industries including manufacturing, mining, food and beverage production. The KNUSC College of Engineering is retooling its laboratories to improve quality of teaching and learning on campus. Our perspective is to be able to have students readily employable once they leave the universities. And by using uh, technology that are currently being used in industry and also uh, uh, come out from our research uh, and development centers, these students and the lecturers actually will be better equipped to, to know what is being used in the industry. Siemens, one of the world's largest producers of energy-efficient and resource-saving technologies, is supporting the retooling drive with equipment worth $25,000. The donation forms part of the company's social responsibility projects aimed at empowering the youth in Ghana to becoming potentially best employees in engineering. Country director of Siemens said Mona Chempo says the company is committed to supporting growth initiatives in Ghana with these technologies. Industry is doing excellent. They are supporting us, they are helping us with training, they are helping us with placements for internships. Our aim actually is to be the topmost engineering university in Africa. 
a partnership agreement signed between Siemens and Ken USD involves a training course for two academic staff in engineering in 2018, as well as internship opportunities for engineering students. Provost of the College of Engineering, Professor Mark Adoma Samoa, says the university, with the support of the private sector, is on course to replace obsolete equipment in its labs. He appealed for additional funding from government to standardize the labs for training and research. Over 750 engineering students are to benefit from the automation solution kit. Well, that's all for business news here on News 360. Nana Kojo Afre comes your way with some sports news after this. Stay with us. Welcome back to News 360. Now, Arocha scientists have discovered that the globally endangered white naped Mangabe uh, Lunatus uh, living in Etiwa Forest. Speaking in an exclusive interview with TV3, National Programs Director of Arocha, Ghana, Darrell Boss, cautioned government about its intended mining of bauxite in the Etiwa Forest. Ghana has attracted global attention as Arocha scientists have discovered a rare terrestrial monkey in the Itiwa forest a few days ago using infrared camera trap. The primate was known to live in only a handful of sites in western Ghana, eastern Cote d'Ivoire and southern Burkina Faso, but now endangered. The mangabe, a rare terrestrial monkey, is classified as critically endangered on the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species. Primates are a human closest creature with almost similar biological traits. Primates play a very crucial role in pharmacology, biomass formation, research among others, hence cherished. But human activities including poaching and deforestation are wiping off the primate population worldwide. National Programs Officer at Arocha, Ghana, explains how critical the finding is to Ghana. It's very, very important and it's also actually very critical because this species is one of um, the most endangered, um, I would say, primate species in the world. And that means that if you don't care for them and their habitat, they are going to get extinct from this world. And also in relation to the fact that we are finding it in a forest reserve that by itself has come under threat, and even now I would say is under record threat from state agency to mine, government to mine the bauxite, the low-grade bauxite that is underneath. I mean, this find is, is a very important one because it highlights the fact that there is still a lot more to see in terms of the biocultural assets that the forest has to offer. According to him, the discovery of the Mangabe monkey makes it all the more concerning that the government of Ghana, with the government of China, wants to push ahead with plans to extract bauxite, the ore of aluminium, from the Itiwa Hills at Chebi. What we are trying to do is get to government at all the, all the angles that we can, working through their various state agencies, administrative agencies, who most of them, I can say, are not happy with the development. And, but also, as we know, our system, they are also afraid somehow to come out and say that, look, this is going to harm us a lot as a country. We are also going to rally Christian bodies, work with us, so that we see how best we can reach out to government. Uh, seven this evening, fast rising music star Kim Promise has no plans of fading out from the industry anytime soon. The selfish composer intends not only make hit tracks, but once that will stay on for generations to come. He has been speaking to Ajua Mufose. <laughs> He popped up as one of the major forces on the music scene early this year and has been releasing back-to-back -back hits. Just like any other new artist, he has been behind the scenes for several years but started the journey professionally over three years ago, albeit not without struggles. King Promise, as he's known, says his aim is to make timeless music and not one-hit tracks. For him, the relevance of the songs churned out is more important than a short period of popularity. I'm looking to make timeless music. 
know people like RTBs, they've been here for like over 10 years and they're still going strong. That's the plan. Not just to ride a wave or do what's trending and, you know, just have a big hit and that's it. I'm trying to make music that when I perform the next 10, 15 years, still has that vibe and still will move you. He said, a lot of hard work and sacrifice has gone into his act, and so he would not settle for less. I'm only getting started, Charlie. There's so much to be done. I don't think I've gotten anywhere yet. I mean, there's the talk of, you know, you're getting there now, there's some fame and all of that, but there's so much more work to be done. The dream is super huge, so we're not anywhere yet. Born Gregory Borte Newman, Promise believes the music always comes first before reward. He said a lot more needs to be done to register his presence and stake his claim even though some people have already started tipping him for new artist of the year. The focus is the music honestly. I just want to put a lot more music out. I just want to take Ghana to the world challenge. So when the awards come to we are thankful but the focus is the music. He revealed his all-time favorite artist in the industry has always been Mr. All For Real of Forian Ponsan. Please do not dance. No, you were <laughs> do not me. dance. I've just, I've no, just no. Showed you a please few of my dancing stick to skills. your day job, please, and the let Christmas the drama first do the dancing, please. There's a lot <laughs> up my sleeves. Don't underestimate me. But on behalf of the rest of the team, we say thank you for spending your 60 minutes with us here on News 360. My name is Alfred Akansi, and I am Solis Rose Quarter. Coming up next is Sadia. Stay. <laughs>